So I'll give a little brush up about the IP addressing. What is an IP addressing? IP address is the main concept of the TCP IP networking and why actually the IP address is needing. Because the IP addressing is a concept to provide the, you know, you know, unique IP address to each and every component. So let's say this is the LAN. Uh, I'm giving one diagram here. This is the LAN and in this LAN you have some production servers like you have web server, you have DNS server, mail server, application server. So all these servers are basically exposed on the internet and all these servers are connected with one layer to switch and another layer to switch we have which is connected with another layer to switch and these are basically the client machines within our network. These are the client machines. These are the basically the desktop machine or the laptops which you can connect with your network to work with these uh, uh, production servers maybe you're just managing these servers here and this is the firewall this is the firewall and the firewall later on is connected with the router router has two uh, you know ends one end is uh, basically to your LAN and the second uh, end is terminated over the network right so the blue color dot and the red color dot I just uh, described so this is the router now, what is the main purpose of the router? The router is connecting the two different networks. So right inside, this is the public network. We have the internet and users are going to access uh, your services from the internet, uh, from the internet. And it is basically going to be connected with the uh, router. So router is connecting your public network and the private network. So router is basically kind of an uh, interface is connecting two different networks. So this is the very simple diagram I'm just uh, telling you here. If you want to ask any question related to this, you may ask. Is this clear? So this is the very simple diagram I just gave you about the network. Yes, Karimula, Pushka, Gara. Is it clear? Right. So, without wasting time, I'm just coming on this concept. What is IP addressing? I just created for you to just uh, avoid any wastage of time. Right. So, what is an IP address? Whenever you design a network, or you need to give an IP address to the machine, the IP address concept uh, comes in picture. IP address is a logical uh, four octet number and it's a logical number uh, that you assign to every printer, computer, switch, router or any other device that's the part of the TCP IP network, right? Or we can say that it's a four octet number. So these are the some examples of IP addresses. So this is the table. So you just uh, understand this table first. Let's say this is the table. In this table, we have the five ranges A, B, C, D, E. So A range basically comes from 0 to 127. B range is from 128 to 191. C range is 192 to 239. And D range is 240 to 247 and E range is 248 to 255. So all these are the ranges. So class A range, class B and class C. So these three classes we are using commercially, right? We are using commercially. So I did right here to just uh, save the time. And for the class A, we have a default subnet mask 255.000 that can also be known as slash eight notation because the only first octet is 255. If you see class B, in the first two octets in the default subnet mask, we have 255, 255, 00, which is slash 16. 
And for the class C network, the default subnet mask is 255.255.255.0, which can be denoted as uh, slash 24. And class D and class E, we do not have any subnet mask and we do not have any slash notation, right? So uh, class A, B and C, we are using commercially in our uh, daily networks. Let's say if I just give you some uh, examples of these uh, IP addresses. For example, these are the randomly. I took some IP addresses. Uh, so this is the IP address 192.31.100.1. So this is uh, this is your class C IP address. In order to identify the class of this IP address, you have to see the first octet. The first octet is 192. And 192 in this table comes under the class C. So this is the class C IP address. Similarly, the second is the 12, 10, 124, 250. So if you see its first octet is 12 and the 12 comes under range A, range A. The first octet comes under the range A between 0, 0 to 127. So this is known as class A IP address. And similarly, we have a class B IP address as well as the class C IP address. I think th this will help you to identify the IP addresses. If you need to identify the IP address of any class, you have to see the first octet and then you have to compare with this table. So you have to remember this table. This table is very important. This is basically bifurcation or you can say uh, the classification of class A, B, C, D, E network. So the total five classes we have in uh, IPv4. If you want to provide, you can provide the both access to the same user. It's up to you. Right. Let's say I'm taking this AWS Management Console Access user. In this, you have to provide password. So, but in access, the programmatic access, you do not provide password. You always have uh, access key. I'm using AWS Management Console Access user. And here we have the two options to provide password, either the password is gener generated automatically or you can provide custom password. Let's say I'm providing custom, pa custom password. I'm providing custom password here, right? Let's say the password is user at the rate 1234. Okay. And you can remove this option require password reset at next login. So I do not want to use this option. Let's say you go and click on permission. So this the one thing is clear. You did provide the name. You did select the account, uh, sorry, AWS account type, which is AWS Management Console Access User. And you did provide the password here. Now click on permission. We have three tiles here. Number one, add a user to the group. If the group is existing and the group has the permission. So instead of providing permission to that user, you can make this user member of existing group correct number one number two is copy permissions from an existing user if you already have user which has number of permissions if you want to make a copy of that user you can use second option and in third attach existing policy i'm interested in that right so we have we have number of existing policies in my account. If you see, I have more than 700 policies in my account. So this number could be changed in your account. Depend how many, uh, how many uh, services you are accessing. On the basis of that, the number of permissions is changing. Here. Okay. So these are the permissions. These are the permissions. And I told you the maximum 10 policies you can attach. So the permission is a policy. Let's say this is administrator access. And uh, if you scroll down, if you scroll down, number of permissions are there. But this is very difficult to just go like this to search the permission. No, this is not a good, good, good practice. What you will do, you will write. For example, you want to provide limited permission. You want to provide limited set of permission about EC2 dashboard, right? So for EC2, not EC2 dashboard, EC2 service, sorry, EC2 service. So we want to provide only read 
read publish about ec2 to this particular john user so you will write ec2 here let's say ec2 as you write ec2 automatically sorted permissions are in front of you you can scroll down and let's say this is the full access this is the ec2 full access no i'm not interested in that so the next to this ec2 full access we have amazon ec2 read only access yes this permission is correct so this way one policy is selected right and if you want to add additional policy because you can you can attach maximum 10 policies here you can go there this policy has been selected so once it is selected you go there and just write the name of another service let's say i'm just writing s3 i'm writing s3 and i also wants to provide the read only permission for s3 right maybe i want him to just uh, monitor resources so we we chose s3 and under s3 we have full access and we have read only access so i'm just providing the read only access okay. read only access and now click on next this way you provide two permissions now key value to key value pair you can add to your user so you are adding a tag here let's say the name is you are saying or you can say team you can say team and he is from executive teams or monitoring team let's say he is from monitoring team right you go and click on review and 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 and, and what what was the name of the user the name of the user was john right you please remember the name of the user was john and finally you review what did you provide you did provide two you attached two policies one was ec2 read only access and another was s3 read only access and once you confirmed everything is correct you can click on this create user and you created the user successfully and this is the link you have to access the user this is the link you have to access the user so you can close this the user has been created you're going to say this is the user you have right so if you want to test how to log in as this additional user what i'm doing so on the same browser i cannot try i'm using my another browser i'm using different browser and uh, i'm pasting the url that i copied from there I pasted the URL and I, I press enter. I do press enter, and this is here we go. What was the username by the way? The username was John. You write the name of the user and you provide the password. The password was I think user eight one two three four. If I'm not incorrect, right? So this is. you click here here you click on sign in and you log in successfully you can see on the top the name of the user so this user has access over only ec2 and s3 and he can maximum monitor the resources he cannot change the status of the resources and even he cannot uh, create any instance he cannot stop any instance he cannot start any instance if you go to ec2 you would see that in ec2 we do not have yeah we have two instances but these two instances are in stop state these two instances are in stop state if he does try to start one instance because he has no permission but i'm just i'm just trying to just uh, you know change the status of the ma machine So guys, in order to start RDS, we must uh, brush up a new terms related to database. I think you must be knowing about the database. And uh, how many of you know about the databases? Please say yes or no. So accordingly, I'll start. Karimala is yes. Arya yes. Rahul no. Okay. So only three people have joined the training. Let me see. No, we have more people. Okay. 
so let me tell you we know that it's a very popular term database database is a very popular term in order to understand relational data management system uh, very first discuss about the database simple data what is a simple data so database is a set of data uh, database is a set of data or information stored in an accessible format and what is that accessible format generally we store our data in a tabular format if you store data in terms of files you can expect all files are independent or data stored in those files are not interconnected i'm talking about the simple data i'm not talking about the rdbms it means that each file is separate and independent with each other in simple database but that concept has gone we are not using simple databases we are using these days rdbms so other side the rdbms relational database uh, is a database which has some structure and data stored in a number of database files so this information stored in a various files and those files somehow can be interlinked and generally you see the data is stored in a table or in a tab uh, tabular format most often you see relation database stored in tables and the tables can can, can and the tables contains uh, rows and columns a simple example i just uh, explain on this slide we have two tables and these two tables are containing some data and these two tables are connected each other right so uh, these two tables are connected to a primary key and the primary key is id if somebody is asking in which country john resides in which country john resides what be your answer so each in which country john resides so you will say yes it's a very simple question and the simple answer you have given the usa because because the one information exists in one table and second information you read from the at the table country so country us this is very simple so this way these two tables are internally connected right so this kind of a database we have these days we are using but that data can be could be very complex because we can have n number of tables and those n number of tables are internally connected with each other so so first of all we are talking about the different concepts of the databases in uh, uh, in aws so in aws the very first thing is i'm talking about data warehouse what is data warehouse and which service we can use to manage in data warehouse in our aws cloud environment so data warehouse is a basically central repository for data which comes from various resources which which comes from various sources and data stored in the data warehouse can be collected from heterogeneous resources or heterogeneous sources means means it is coming from the various collection from the different uh, different types and you are collecting that data at one at central place so that central repository of that data is known as data warehouse so data warehouse usually contain huge amount of data related to particular field which would further be used for data analysis and complex queries that data can be used for machine learning the data can be used for artificial intelligence the data can be used for the business intelligence right so as you know the companies were maintaining the data warehouse at their own premises but as per current trend you can find data warehouse over the cloud over the cloud the data where uh, data warehouse solution is cheaper it is faster and it is easy to manage right it is easy to manage so we have this slide so yeah so you will understand <clears throat> so in aws we have a service called redshift so aws offers redshift service for fast and cost effective data warehouse repository of the data contains specialized type of relational database i'm speaking i'm repeating the sentence again repository of data contains specialized type of relational database which can be further used for analysis through 
ऑनलाइन एनालिटिकल प्रोसेसिंग ऑनलाइन एनालिटिकल प्रोसेसिंग समटाइम्स वी नो इट एज ओ एल ओ एल ए पी ओ एल ए पी राइट ओ एल ए पी इज अ कंप्यूटर प्रोसेसिंग दैट इनेबल्स अ यूजर टू इजिली एंड सेलेक्टिवली एक्सट्रैक्ट एंड व्यू डाटा फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ यूजर कैन रिक्वेस्ट अ डाटा Uh, be analyzed to be analyzed uh, to display a spreadsheet showing all the companies uh, uh, all the companies uh, product uh, sold in a particular area in a particular month so you can compare revenue figure with those for the some uh, same product in in different month it means if you have a lot of data and if you want to analyze it for business use for survey for some other use definitely this data is being used in businesses so different from the different direction you can collect actually the data for the business analysis right so if you are dealing with a large amount of data it comes uh, uh, under the category of the data warehousing okay so we have a service called redshift for that but redshift doesn't come doesn't come under uh, database services Uh, instance here this screen will open and in this screen very first of all you have uh, these two options to select uh, the creation method so what is the creation method the first is uh, easy create easy create means you have not to select all uh, minor options you have to select only basic options to configure it in in uh, in a quick way in a quick manner it's saying that if you are choosing easy create we are using experience of aws on the basis of best practices it will configure uh, rds instance for you and some configuration option can be changed after the database is created so it means on the basis of the experience aws has it will create an rds instance for you if you want to make some changes later on you can do some changes and uh, so here for practice i think it's not a good option to select second option is uh, standard create in a standard create you have to select each and every option whether it is a minor or whether it is a main option you have to provide each and every information like uh, how to configure it uh, name of the database the name of the table even availability security backup maintenance everything you will select here so we are selecting this uh, standard create in standard create uh, we have okay great out of 6 wow this is a chain this is a chain right can you see out of 6 now we have the four database engines here right so it means it means they 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 just just maria db is there no maria db is removed and postgresql is removed can you see we have a different option here below addition Aurora MySQL compatible addition and Aurora PostgreSQL compatible. So they divided into two category. Wow. Now this is a good thing. This is a change here. I don't see MariaDB and the PostgreSQL. Do you see? So these two are eliminated. 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 On the basis of the use pattern, I think. so they remove this now these two are and these two uh, database engines are not there we have aurora mysql oracle and microsoft sql server i don't see mariadb and postgresql is it yes it is marsql so separately we don't have earlier we had like this mariadb and the postgresql I think this is changed few days back only. I was working last to last week, so so we had all six engines. So they just upgraded this one. 
by the way i'm taking yes yes aurora was different now we have the two additions here the amazon aurora post gray sql compatible addition if you want to just go with the post gray or my uh, sorry uh, this one my db you can select this option here right good good okay i'm taking my sql here let's say i'm taking my sql right now so in my sql i selected the first of all uh, the engine type and if you move you have various versions on the requirement of your projects you can select the various versions right we have the various versions so you can select any one of them uh, which depend on your uh, project second we have template we have three templates here one template is for production and one template uh, template is for dev test and another is for free tier right another template is for free tier free tier is recommended if you are using free tier account free tier is recommended if you are using free tier account okay because uh, uh, because you you have not to pay anything if you are using the free tier but let's say what will happen if you choose production one and what additional features you will see in production so i'll start with the production correct next is db instance identifier the first of all you need to write the name of the db instance right for example i'm writing cognitia db i'm writing the cognitia db cognitia db and uh, here you can provide credential settings admin is a username username can be anything so for me i think admin is okay and you need to provide the password you need to provide password let's say i'm providing password user 1234 so user 1234 right simple password we have database instance classes we have three different classes in production we have m classes r and x classes as well as we have t classes t is a bustable class so let's say if you want to take a standard one you have number of option these are database instance types so the complete uh, information and the configuration below and the, the names they, their names are given let's say if you select m5 8x large you will get 32 virtual cpus and 120 gb ram and the network speed can go up to 6800 mbps similarly if you are looking for memory optimized classes or memory intensive uh, db instance classes you can select the memory optimized class and open and you will find number of options here so let's say i'm just selecting uh, this is good for me I'm, i'm i'm just going to select uh, four virtual cpu and 32 gb ram so this is right and you are moving further i selected db.r5.x large and we are getting four virtual cpu 32 gb ram and in storage storage definitely is different you always select storage uh, ebs volume separately so we have the two classes here number one is uh, general purpose and uh, another is a provision array so generally for production environment we choose uh, uh, provision iops which because here you can manage number of iops as per your requirements you can increase or decrease number of iops you can manage the speed read write speed of your ebs volume <clears throat> by changing uh, number of iops let's say you have uh, one tb space on this uh, rds instance and uh, provision iops you can just take five times i'm taking 5000 right why it is in red it is in red because the maximum threshold must be more than allocated storage space so you had given over there so here i'm just writing 1048 right this way now this uh, entry has been uh, selected and accepted <clears throat> now you can just go 
it enables uh, store auto scaling okay this time right. if it enables the auto scaling you can use this maximum storage threshold so it is not uh, important to just put a small uh, you can go up to 60 tb 64 tb right so the maximum size of the allocated storage volume can go up to 64 tb right by the way now next is availability and durability so if you want to create primary as well as a secondary instance in that case you should choose this option so if you want to create standby instance in that case you, you should choose multi availability zone deployment so you are creating two similar machines the first machine will become primary and second machine will become secondary and you have to pay for two machines here right you have to pay for the two machines here the the cost of your db instance will be double so you have to if you are really needed this feature then you should enable it because it is uh, it is increasing the cost of your database a database instance now the second you will choose in which particular vpc you want to uh, deploy this machine so we have i think uh, one vpc here if you want to create a new vpc you have an option to create a new vpc i'm okay with existing default vpc and we must have a subnet group right now we do not have any subnet group right we do not have any subnet group this is the monitoring service you can monitor resources and performance of the resources we generally have the two different kind of uh, cloud monitoring service levels in uh, aws one one is uh, uh, one is uh, basic and another is detailed so so if you are just looking for the free free tier account in free tier account you are getting basic basic level and then you have enhanced one the another is enhanced enhanced or you can say detailed detailed right you have enhanced and you have detailed in in cloud what what is this this is a monitoring service and it is used to uh, monitor the resources and the application that you run in aws and in order to maintain the performance of aws services especially uh, like uh, ec2 lambda root 53 so you can use all these uh, all say this cloud watch service monitoring basically helps us to maintain the quality of the service so basically monitoring is helping us to ensure that uh, the quality of the service to the end user and it also used to troubleshoot technical issues you can use a uh, monitoring the cloudwatch monitoring service to troubleshoot the issue in aws uh, in aws configuration for monitoring in aws the cloudwatch uh, is the only an ultimate answer you can get an alert on cloudwatch if things go wrong you can use mm, matrix related aws services to collect information so we have number of matrix i'll talk about those matrix but if we have the two levels i was talking about the basic monitoring basic level of monitoring and we have enhanced level of monitoring if we are talking about the basic level of monitoring it's absolutely free <coughs> it's absolutely free number one it pulls it pulls data it pulls data in every 5 minute it that's why uh, it, it is uh, basically free and it doesn't provide you immediate immediate uh, uh, reflection of the data that uh, is being changed so it takes 5 uh, minutes to collect the data from the resource and it will show you and uh, generally uh, on standard on standard uh, standard generally generally approximately it works with it uh, works with 10 metrics if you are using if you are using free one and secondly uh, 
you have uh, basically the permission to store 5 GB ingested data. 5 GB of data can be stored, stored, stored uh, uh, from CloudWatch. It means the 5 GB means the 5 GB free data. 5 GB, 5 GB free data can be stored from the CloudWatch. So if you are using more than 5 GB, if you are storing more than 5 GB, then you have to pay additional price, right? So this is the one thing that uh, you can do with this. We have the number of uh, metrics. Uh, so let me talk about some metrics we have. Because the detail monitoring, of course, detail monitoring is not free. It's a chargeable, right? So this is a chargeable. In enhanced monitoring or detail monitoring, it's a chargeable. This is chargeable. Of course, it's not free. I'm writing not free. And uh, polls data in every one minute or or less less than one minute. You can set according to you. And you have to pay for it, right? So you have to pay. You have to pay for enhanced enhanced monitoring. Monitoring. If you're talking about the EC2 instance for for EC2 EC2 enhanced monitoring enhanced monitoring enhanced monitoring you have to pay pay for pay for per instance right on a permanent basis enhance right what did i write okay per month so these are the few things the cloud so one thing is clear the cloud watch provides the monitoring for aws services and uh, the cloud watch gives the liberty to monitor aws application resources in cloud which helps uh, system administrator and architects to see the performance of aws resources so CloudWatch is automatically configured for uh, standard metrics uh, to monitor such, uh, such as uh, request counts, uh, uh, CPU usage or latency, latency, uh, latency usage of the CPU. Users can customize CloudWatch for monitoring as per their requirements. CloudWatch is very useful for technical teams to resolve some operational issues. So in CloudWatch, generally, if you're talking about EC2, in EC2, uh, you can monitor all the components. You can monitor all the other services like uh, instance, EBS volume. And if you're talking about the other services, you can manage uh, or you can see ELB. Uh, you can club with the ELB. You can see with the, with the performance of uh, Beanstalk, you can see the performance of RDS. So means this is a basically CloudWatch is an integrated service service with other other services. So cloud monitoring system is very easy to use. They they like it because of its integration with the services. So you have not to use it separately. But separately, if you want to create, you can create a dashboards and some widgets to just monitor the resources. So many metrics for major services basically in AWS is free, by the way. The general general metrics are free. <laughs> and we have some examples of these metrics. So I can give some examples. Examples of uh, metrics. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking actually in this EC2. I'm taking EC2, EC2 service, right? I'm taking EC2 service. So in EC2, you have not to remember actually. Very simple, you will remember like the CPU utilization. Uh, you can use uh, disk read operations. You're gonna use network in, network, network out. Now you can 
also use network just you can use okay yes you can use network packets in packet in or out right in or out so this way you have a long list of metrics so generally people are using uh, cpu utilization disk operations network in network out. so these are free with by the way so you can use them free of cost <clears throat> we have e even ebs matrix because uh, ebs also is very important component of your ec2 instance to measure the performance so in ebs we have we have some list of uh, matrix in case of the ebs <clears throat> this is going to be very interesting in a few minutes i'll tell you how you can create alerts uh read operations you're going to use ebs uh right right operation right operations you can see ebs uh ebs 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 read uh, bytes and write bytes you will remember right right bytes few more things are there but uh, these are generic right yes did you write something pushkar how to check how many messages were sent ah uh, yeah that i was just looking for that was not there actually in this earlier it was there but uh, i was so maybe because through the logs you can watch it right so the direct count is not there so this is a change let me see where they made the changes how to check number of sns messages sent sns messages sent you go to the cloud console navigation pan metric this old stuff i think this will not work this will not work the monitoring monitoring sns topics using cloud watch now this has been moved to cloud watch right so it means you will use this cloud watch service to see these messages so here you go you going to see you go to the cloud watch console in the navigation pan we have metrics on all metrics choose sns the country sns type phone number topic metrics we will see that we will see that right this is the part this is going to be part of the cloud watch is it correct pushka so that's why they they made some changes earlier we used to see the same thing on sns but they made some changes so this is these are the recent changes they did they. so a uh, few things i need to just tell you uh one more thing not only uh metric related to the services we can also manage or see or uh, monitor your billing and cost of the used resources mm -hmm.